Hello, my beautiful computer science students. Welcome to another lesson in our 10th unit on recursion. This lesson is called Printing and Manipulating Recursively, um, but really it's just an extension of the recursive problems that you will see. Um, we're still going to be tracing through recursive methods, determining um, what they return, or now we'll see um, determine what they print off to the council. So it's still working through recursive problems. Um, we'll start off with some print recursion. Now print recursion is something that I think I actually made up. I don't even know. I just give it, uh, I just, that's just what I call recursive methods that have a system to out that print statement in them. And as we've talked about, recursion is calling a method calling itself. So you're going to have quite a few method calls. And with that, even though there's a single print line or print statement in your method, it's going to be called multiple times. So tracing through a method with a system dot dot print, uh, you just again have to be careful about when the print statement executes um, and what local variables it's going to execute with. So I'll show you all the examples to make sure that you're comfortable with it. Um, the big thing here again is that local variable, you know, what is the value of the variable when that print line statement is executing? Um, and of course, when it will. Um, I'm still going to be using that top down technique to um, evaluate these recursive methods. Again, I just think it's it's uh, the most intuitive here, um, but if you have another way you would like to use, feel free to do that. Um, but all of these examples use the top-down technique. And we're going to get right into it because you already know what recursion is. We've been dealing with um, recursion where the parameter is an integer or maybe a Boolean or a double, um, but the parameter is a primitive and the return value is also a primitive. I think this might be the first one where we've seen a void method. Okay, avoid return. All right, so in avoid return, notice how in there there's no return statement, right? Because you're not returning anything. But there is still a recursive call. The recursive call happens right here, right? Count n minus 1. So you're still calling on the method itself. So you can have a void recursive method here. Um, what's also new is we have this print statement right in here. Okay. Now remember, print just prints all on the same line without moving the cursor to the next line on the council. So when you're just doing a regular print statement, you're just going to see everything printed off in one line. And that's what we're going to keep track of here. So what does count three print? Well, we're going to start off using this like we always do, right? Count three. We're going to start with the big problem and we're going to break it down into a series of smaller steps. So count three. Um, when I first go through, n is 3. So I'm going to print a 3 to the council, and then I check 3 is not equal to 1. So then I'm going to make a recursive call here. All right, and I want you to notice what I did here. I said 3 plus count 2. Now, before in the problems we were doing, plus actually stood for addition. Now, here, because we're dealing with a print, um, uh, a print uh, method, yeah print recursion, um, the three, or the, excuse me, the plus for me stands for almost like a concatenation, okay? We are not going to add these together because I'm, I'm printing it off to the screen. So it's just going to be a string of values that I print off to the screen. So in my head, this plus is just going to stand for concatenate together, okay? Because when you print off numbers, um, you're going to print off them just as it's going to look like one big string, okay? So that's just my little shorthand way of saying um, concatenate with. So I'm going to print off a three, and then I'm going to concatenate with whatever count two ends up printing off. So I got to figure out what count two is. Count two prints off of prints off a of two because n is two. Two is not equal to one, so I make the recursive call of count two minus one, and two minus one is one. So that's why I got count one there. Count one is going to print off a one because n is one. And then if one is not equal to one, well, that's false. So this statement gets skipped and I'm done. I've reached my quote unquote base case, right? Once n became one, 
I just print it off of one and I'm done. There's no return statement, again, because it's a void method, so you're not actually going to return something. You just print off a of, print off a of one. Okay. And now you're not done. The answer is not one. You have to redistribute back up the um, almost stack we created in order to figure out what count three is going to print. Okay. So count three printed a three and then took a pause to evaluate count two. Count two printed a two, took a pause, evaluated count one. Now we know that count one is one. Okay. So count two is going to print off a two and a one together. And count three is going to print off a three, two, one. Okay. And again, those plus signs stand for concatenation. So what actually gets printed off is three, two, one right to the screen. Sound good? So you just, again, I use the plus sign as a way to keep track of um, the print recursion concatenation. If you have another shorthand you would like to use, but this is just kind of what I use. So count three prints off, three, two, one. Right. So that print statement came before the recursive call. Okay. Where the print statement is in relationship to the recursive call is important. So in this case, it came before the recursive call. In this example, we're going to come after. So it's almost the exact same example, but it's coming after the recursive call because I want you to see how it changes. Okay. So what does count three print now? So count three, n is currently three. So the first time through this, you got to remember that your local variable n is three. Okay. So everywhere here in this recursive call now, n is going to be three. So when I go through, 3 is not equal to 1, so count 3 minus 1 gets called. Okay? But when it gets called, remember it's kind of like a method chain where the Java will say, okay, let's take a pause here, let's go figure out what count 2 is, and then we're going to come back and we're going to finish off this method and actually print a 3. Okay? So this is very important. The local variable right now is n equals 3. So count three is going to make the recursive call to count two first, and then it's going to print off a three after that, okay, after the fact. Okay. So when th n is three, this is what happens. It makes a call to count two. It's going to evaluate count two, but then it's going to come back and it's going to print off a three at the very end. Okay. So let's figure out what count two is. Okay. So again, this time the local variable n is going to be a two. So you're going to make a recursive call to count one first, and then you're going to come back and print a two. Okay. So figure out what count one is. Okay, Count one is just going to be a one, right? Because if n is not equal to one, that's false. So this if statement gets skipped, and it's just a one that gets printed. Okay. Now when you go back up, <coughs> the one gets printed first, and then the two gets printed. And then when you go here, the one and the two get printed first and then the three. So count three actually prints off one, two, three. Okay. So that location of the print statement uh, matters in relationship to the recursive call. Okay. <clears throat> Again, count three. It goes count two first and it says, okay, let's take a break. Let's figure out what count two is. Count two evaluates. Oh, it says, okay, take a break. We got to figure out what count one is. Count one. Count one prints off a of one. So that's the very first thing that gets printed. And then it comes up here. It says, okay, I evaluated this. Now let's print off a two. All right, perfect. I evaluated count two. Now let's print off a three. Okay. So the sequence, the execution of of these statements still follows what we're used to. It's just we just got to keep track of it a bit closer here. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Oh, now let's really get crazy. Take a look at this one. Now we have a print statement before and after our recursive call. Ooh, extra fun. We're going to 
Do it like we always do though, okay? Um, this is why I love the top-down technique. This is why I love the problem-solving approach I'm showing you right now is because it works for all types of recursive methods that I'm gonna show you, okay? So just keep track of it. Um, if it's getting kind of jumbled in your head, uh, write it down and work it out, okay? So here, count three. N is three. So this is three. N is three. N is three. N is three. Okay, so what does that mean? It means you're going to print a three first, then you're going to count, check the condition. Three is not equal to one, that's true. So you're going to make a recursive call to count two. After that recursive call executes, then you're going to print off a three again. Okay. So the way I write it is I'm going to print off a three, I'm going to take a pause, figure out what count two is. After count two is done executing, I'm going to come back and I'm going to print off a three. Okay. So those plus signs, again, concatenation here because I'm just printing off statements. So what is count two? So this time, n is two. So I go through this whole thing again. Now my local variable is two, right? So I print off a two, check my condition, make the recursive call, and I'll come back later and print off that other two. Now with count one, okay? One, 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 n is one. I print off a one. The if statement is false, one is not equal to one, that's false. So I make no recursive call, and then I print off another one. So count one has me printing off two ones together. Okay, okay now what is the order that this happens in? Okay, so once you evaluate what count one is, it's kind of like the addition ones the other recursive problems we've been doing. You just substitute this back up for this, right? So this is now gonna be equal to two plus one plus one plus two, okay? It's just the plus stands for concatenation, right? So then we take these four numbers, these strings of four numbers, and we stick it right between these ones, okay? So I get three, two, one, one, two, three. And that's what count three prints off. That's what's going to print to the council when you run this method. So what happened? Count three, three prints to the screen. And then it says, oh, wait, let's figure out what this is. Count two, I print this to the screen. Oh, wait, let's figure out what this is. Print a one, print a one. Okay, I evaluated this. Now let's come back and print the two. All right, I evaluated this, come back, and we'll finish this off and print a three, okay? So that's the chain, that's the um, sequence of how those statements are executed. And that's why you see three, two, one, one, two, three get printed to the screen. We love print recursion. Okay. One last example uh, for print recursion here. Just something fun, right? <laughs> Just something fun. Now we have two recursive calls and a print statement between them, okay? Now on the AP exam, how crazy are they gonna get with these? Well, honestly, I don't see them get too crazy. The examples I've seen from past exams, they don't go wild with recursive calls or even with print recursion necessarily. Um, but I need you to approach these more like a problem solving exercise. You're training your brain, you're exercising your brain um, to figure out what these print off. When are you gonna use this? Eh, well, probably never, right? It's one of those things, if you become a computer scientist and are coding in Java, are you gonna code methods like this? No, okay, let's be honest. But you do need the problem solving skills that this is working. Okay, you need to be able to think through these and figure out what the, um, uh, what the answer is and be able to logically deduce um, problems in this manner. Okay, so sorry, that's my soapbox thing. This is why you need to do it, right? Okay, let's trace through. Count three. So our local variable is three. So this is what happens, right? I make a recursive call then I print off a three, and then I make another recursive call, okay? So the first time through, n is three, this is what happens. Recursive call, print a three, recursive call. All right, keep track of that local variable in there. So we gotta figure out what count two is. Count two, same thing. 
Recursive call, printed to, recursive call. Okay, so we gotta figure out what count one is. Now when n is one, this statement is false. I print a one, and then this statement is false. So the only thing count one does is print a one. So when I go back up and I substitute that in for this call and for this call, I get one plus two plus one. Okay. And then I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna substitute it back into this call and into this call. So I get the one, two, one, then I print a three, and then I get one, two, one again. Okay. So count three prints off one, two, one, three, one, two, one. See, even when things look crazy, even when you see a problem that you haven't figured out before, you can do it, okay? You can do it using those um, top-down techniques we've been working on. Okay, I got two more sections here in the notes. I have number manipulation and string manipulation, okay? Number manipulation, string manipulation. So these examples, number manipulation first and then string ex string manipulation, these are actually what you're more likely to encounter um, in Java programming because they, they help solve a problem in a uh, recursive fashion, okay? So this one um, takes an input of a large number and using a combination of print recursion and manipulated number calls, it allows us to come up with basically a new number, okay? So this one specifically, this is, um, this accepts an integer, but it returns nothing. It's a void method, you see. So there's no return statement here. It's just gonna use a combination of print statements to um, print off whatever number it needs to print off here. So what does mystery three, four, five, six print? Well, as long as n is not equal to zero, you're gonna print off something and then make a recursive call, okay? Else, you're just gonna print off an exclamation point, okay? So think about what your base case is, right? Your base case, you end when n is zero, okay? When you're trying to find mystery zero, you print off an exclamation mark and that is when your recursion stops. Okay. So it's always good to keep in mind with your base case when uh, when is this going to end? Okay? Especially if it is infinite recursion, you don't want to go forever before you realize that it's infinite recursion. Okay? So you can kind of start thinking about it now. So 3 4 5 6. Okay? What's going to happen? Well, I'm going to print off that number mod 5, okay? What is 3 4 5 6 mod 5? Well, three, four, five, five is evenly divisible by five, okay? So three, four, five, six, the remainder is just a one, okay? So I'm gonna print off a one, and then I make a recursive call to mystery three, four, five, okay? Why? Well, when I take three, four, five, 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 six, and divide it by 10, okay? It goes in 345 times evenly, okay? So that's the recursive um, call I'm gonna make now, okay? So number manipulation, you might have to do a little bit of math. <gasps> math, you might have to do a little bit of math with it. Sorry, I'm being dramatic for no reason for comedic effect. I will move on. Mystery, three, four, five. N is three, four, five now, which is not equal to zero. 3, 4, 5, mod 5. 3, 4, 5 divided by 5 is even, right? So there's no remainder. So that's why I'm going to print off a 0. And then 3, 4, 5 divided by 10 is going to be 34. It goes in, 10 goes into 345 evenly 34 times. So then now mystery 34, okay? When I take 34 mod 5, Okay, five goes into 30 evenly with a remainder of four. So that's why I'm gonna print off a of four. And then 34 divided by 10, 10 goes into 34 three times. So mystery three. So I'm still not at my base case. I still have mystery three. Three mod, ten, mod five is a remainder of three because five doesn't go in evenly to three. 
and then 3 divided by 10. 10 doesn't go in evenly to 3, so 0. Now I've reached my base case, right? Because I said this else statement is going to run when that parameter is 0. And I'm going to print off an exclamation point. Okay. So now I just go back and I substitute back in, right? So this is 3 exclamation, 4 3 exclamation, 0 4 3 exclamation, 1 0 4 3 exclamation, okay? And it's a print statement. So those numbers just got printed off those numbers and the exclamation mark just got printed off to the screen. Look good? Okay, so that was avoid one. Let's see a number manipulation where we are returning a number, okay? So here, now I'm actually going to return something um, and my parameter is an integer as well. Um, it's almost the same idea. I use some of the same math for this one, um, but I just wanted you to see a number manipulation um, with a return statement. So I'm still figuring out what mystery three, four, five, six returns. Okay, I see my base case right here. When n, if n is equal to zero, I'm going to return zero, and that's my stopping point. Otherwise, I have a return statement with a recursive call. It has. Um, not only does it have an operation here, but it also has a recursive call here, okay? And because I'm dealing with integers, this plus does mean addition, okay? So just kind of orientate yourself in the problem here. The plus would mean addition in this case because you are returning an integer value. Okay, so mystery three, four, five, six. Again, three, four, five, six mod five is one plus mystery three, four, five. We already did this math, so I'm going to kind of gloss over it, but we just did this mod and division math in the problem above. But that plus sign now stands for addition because we're returning an integer. So I would add those two numbers together at the end. Mystery 3, 4, 5 is 0 plus mystery 34. Mystery 34 is 4 plus mystery 3. Mystery 3, it looks very similar to what I just did. Mystery 0 returns 0 because <laughs> I've reached my base case now. And now I substitute all of those back in, but I am adding them together as I go. Oh, and I caught a mistake I made. So 3 plus 0 is 3. Oh, sorry. I, this is the mistake I made. I just caught this. I'll fix it. Um, <laughs> 4 plus 3 is definitely 7. Obviously, I accidentally multiplied them, but it is 7. <laughs> so then I take the 7 up here, and I do 0 plus 7, which is going to be 7. And then right here, I do 1 plus 7, which is going to be 8. Okay. So this method returns an 8. Okay. Sound good? Number manipulation. Okay. Now our last examples are going to be string manipulation. Okay, so string manipulation um, with the recursive method, you, the best way to do this, you can do this top-down design, and I'll show you how to do it top-down design, but I do recommend trying to find a pattern, okay? If you can determine what the pattern is, okay, what is the method trying to accomplish, then you might not have to do the full trace, okay? especially when these problems on the AP exam are always multiple choice problems. If you can avoid the amount of work you have to do, um, you'll want to do that. You'll save time on one problem so you can spend more time on the other. So for here, it might not be obvious looking at it what's going on. And that's fine. I don't expect it to be obvious when you're looking. I mean, try to find a pattern as you're working through your top-down technique. Okay, so if I look here, I'm being uh, passed the parameter is a string and I'm returning a string. Okay, so any plus signs in here are going to be um, concatenation. So I see my stopping point. It says if word dot length is less than or equal to one, um, I just return the word. So once I get down to one letter or no letter, I stop. 
otherwise, I have three things going on here. I have a string called first, a string called rest, and then a return mystery rest plus first. First, word dot substring zero comma one. Okay, I know that that is um, getting the first letter. So first stands for the first letter in word. And then the rest, word dot substring one, okay, I know that this code is chopping off that first letter and just taking the rest of the word. Okay, perfect. That makes sense. Okay, and orientating yourself in what those mean um, is going to help you trace through this problem. So if I make a call to mystery mail, M A I L, mail, what is going to get returned? Well, the length of my word is greater than one. Okay, so I have my local variables first. The first letter is M, and the rest is ale, right? Zero, one, two, three. So substring zero comma one is just the M, and substring one is just starting at that index and the rest of the word. It's been a it's been a minute since we've worked with <laughs> with string methods, so this is good review right here. But those are my local variables. First and rest are local variables, meaning that they're going to change with each method call. Okay, they're not going to stay the same the whole way through this trace. They're going to change each time. So what happens? Well, I'd take mystery rest, so mystery ale, and I concatenate it with M, okay. which means I got to figure out what this is first before I attach an M to the end. Mystery ale. Sorry, I'm a little lackadaisical with my quotation marks around my string, but hopefully you get it. The first letter is A, the rest is ill, so I do mystery ill plus A, okay? Mystery ill. The first letter is I, the rest is an L, that's an L by the way, it looks like a one on the screen. Times New Roman, am I right? But that's supposed to be an L. So mystery L plus I. Now mystery L, okay, L is now my word, L is the word, and word dot length is less than or equal to one. So that means I just return what that word is. So I just return L and my recursion stops. Okay. And now I go back through and I do my substitution. So L goes right here. So I get LI. LI goes back right here to this recursive call. So I get LIA. And LIA goes back to this recursive call and you get L-I-A and then an M. So mystery mail will return Liam. <laughs> I thought I was clever. Okay, but what was the pattern, right? So I did everything top-down technique. I didn't talk about what the pattern was. What was the pattern? Well, it takes the string and it reverses it. Okay, that's what this method does. Takes the string and reverses it. And this is very helpful if you have a long word. Instead of going through all of that, let's say you had um, like mailboxes, right? And you got through mail and you're like, hey, wait, I know what this is doing. <laughs> you don't have to finish it. You can just say, I know that this is going to return. Ooh, that's an unfortunate word. I'm so sorry. Um, I can return that because I know that this method is going to reverse the string. Wow, good job, teacher. Sorry about that. We'll just move. We'll move on from that. Um, <laughs> uh, here's something that I also want to make sure you can do is taking a recursive method and writing it non-recursively. Okay. Now, when we take a recursive method and write it non-recursively, we mean write it iteratively. So use a loop to accomplish the same thing. Because we've used loops to accomplish this before, where we um, uh, flip the word, right? And we reverse a word so that the letters print off the other way. So we want to write a recursive method, but write it iter iteratively. <laughs> Okay. And even though writing recursive methods is not on the AP exam, I think this is a very great problem solving skill that you should be able to do. So the last method was taking a string and um, reversing it. Right? So we know how to do that. 
Okay, so let's write a method. I'll just name it mystery again, just because, whatever. That'll take a string, and it's going to return the same string, but in reverse, all the characters reversed. So I need a new word. It's going to be an empty string starting off, and I'm going to eventually return the new word. I'm writing this non-recursively. I'm going to use a loop. Okay. Okay, so what can I do? Well, I can use this word, and I can go through backwards. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go through this word backwards. So I'm going to start at the very last index. The last index of the word is word.length minus 1. So I'm going to start at that index, and I'm going to go move backwards. And I'm going to append that letter to um, new word. Okay. And I just noticed an issue. Da, da, da. Okay, and that's going to accomplish the same thing non-recursively, but there's an issue with my code. Okay, take a moment. I would, can you find the issue with my code? There's an error. Ah, always be careful of your boundaries here, right? I was very careful that I had to be word.length minus one. That has to be the very first um, index in my word uh, because... If I just did word.length, and I'm covering it up on the screen, but you can't see that. If I just did word.length, there's no index of word.length, right? So I have to do minus one to start at the very last index. But in here, I take i minus one. So I also have to be careful of my stopping point here. If I include zero, what's zero minus one? It's negative one, and I don't have um, an index of negative one. So I should get rid of that negative that equal sign right there. Okay, I want to go down to the beginning of the word but not include zero because then I'll get a string index out of bounds. I wish I could say I made that mistake on purpose but I accidentally included that in there. But I'm kind of glad I did because it allows us to talk about string boundaries. So that's taking a recursive method, writing it non-recursively. And notice how the way we did it wasn't necessarily to like, okay, this is a recursive line. Let's write this as a non-recursive line. It was, okay, what's this task? Okay, then now how can I do it so that it accomplishes the same task? It wasn't like line for line translation. Okay. One more example. Okay, one more example in this lesson. Last example. Um, it's called what's it do? So it takes a string and it returns an integer. Okay. So I see I have my base case. If word.length is equal to zero, return zero. Um, otherwise, I'm going to do this fun thing, right? I see I have the code string first and string rest again. First being the first letter, rest being substring dot one. If first dot equals e, I return one plus what's it do with the rest. Else, I just return what's it do with the rest. Okay. Can you see what it does? <laughs> we'll do a full trace of this, but if you are catching on enough and can figure out what this method is trying to do to the word, okay, then you don't really have to go through the whole trace on a multiple choice question, right? What values return from a call to what's it do cheese? If you know what it does, you already know what the answer is, right? So be on the lookout for those problems. If you can easily figure out what a method does, don't go through the trace, okay? We will, though, here, because that's just what I do, right? Cheese. What's that going to return? Well, the first letter is C. The rest is H-E-E-S-E. -E -E. So the first letter is not equal to E. So I'm just going to return H-E-E-S-E. -E -E. Well, what's, oops, I forgot a little O right here. What is, what's it do H-E-E-S-E? -E -E? Well, what's it do h -E -E? The first letter is H. First is not equal to E. So I just return what's it do with the rest, which is E-E-S-E. -E -E. What's it do, E-E-S-E? -E -E. First is going to be E, 
it is equal, first is equal to e, so I return 1 plus the rest. ESE returns, again, the first is e, so I return 1 plus SE. SE first does not equal e, so I just return what's it do with the rest, which is e. What's it do? First is e. The rest of the substring is just an empty string, right? So that's the length of the word is, the length is one. It doesn't have an index. So remember, if you just do substring of the length, um, it's just an empty string. Remember your string methods. So what's it do now? The length, it's an empty string. So the length is zero. So I'm going to return zero. Okay. And this method returns an integer. So I'm going to, when I go back up and I substitute all of these back in, I'm adding these values together. Okay. And when I add them all up, I get a three. Okay. Oh man, that was a lot of work. That was a lot of writing it out. But what did this do the whole time? Okay. It just counted up how many E's were in the method. This whole time. Just counted up the number of E's. Okay. So we're going to take that and we are going to write it, but non-recursively or iteratively is what we'll say. Okay. We're going to write it so it accomplishes the same thing, but just in an iterative sense using a loop. So I'm going to take a, take a string and I'm going to return the number of times an E is in the word. So count is going to be zero and at the end I'm going to return count. Okay. Using a loop, I want to go through the whole word. I, started, I can start at zero and go up to the end of the word. And I want to check if that letter is equal to E. And if it is, I want to add one to my count. We've done methods like this. We've written methods like this before in this course. It's been a while, but we have written methods like this before. So hopefully this feels familiar. Um, not all recursive problems can be written with a loop. Okay, And that's actually what our next lesson is going to go over. In lesson three, we're going to talk about Tower of Hanoi, which is a problem um, that is very, very difficult to solve without recursion. I don't know if it's impossible. I have to look that up. But very difficult to solve without recursion. So not all methods can be solved with a loop. Um, and just like some loops cannot necessarily be solved with recursion, just depends on how intricate they are. But we just saw two examples where you could do either way. You could write recursion or you could write with a loop and get it to accomplish the same thing. And that brings us to the, to the end of lesson two. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you next time.